Welcome to the Talent Culture Podcast. Learn how the most innovative companies implement culture and make it part of their strategy. On the Talent Culture Podcast, we're interviewing business professionals on how they prioritize onboarding and culture, bringing our own expertise and experience from working with dozens of companies on exactly this. The Talent Culture Podcast is an actionable strategy guide that can either help you implement these strategies in your company or learn how you get buy-in from executives. Your host is Søren Bolvi, CEO at Impact. Enjoy. Welcome to Tobias, the Youth Minister at Coop. Youth Minister, actually an interesting title. Could you explain to me what that means? Yeah, sure. So, so basically, to, to to tell you what the title means, I have to tell you uh, why we have the title at all. Coop is a huge company with twenty five thousand young people between fifteen and twenty five years old, and uh, and we are not especially good in keeping them for a long time. So uh, there needed to be done something about how to ensure that that we we keep our young people for longer time, and and for doing that, you could. Yeah, you could uh, put it in a management group or some team somewhere, or you could uh, hire a dedicated res- resource, which uh, Corp was deciding to do. And and after that, y- you have to decide like what the name is, right? And if you call it a, a, a youth administrator or a youth coordinator or something, it's it's not really like uh, itchy and sexy, right? But if you call it like a youth minister, oh, then it's, it's exciting and, and, and cool, right? So, so I guess that's the the main thoughts, and that we also a democratic organization. So, so the whole like uh, electing somebody to represent somebody thought is really good for our mentality. Okay. So, but but how? What is it exactly that uh, you try to achieve? And could you may, maybe come with some example on what is it that you do? How do you treat maybe uh, the young ones different from what do you say the old ones? I have two purposes. I have to make sure that our young people are staying for longer, and I have to make sure that young people in the future also are, are happy to work at our our company, so to speak. And um, like one uh, one effort could be that uh, we are at the moment looking into how the young, the youngest of them can make sure they have a job at our place. And when you are like 15, 14, 13, there are very specific rules for what you can do and not to uh, to do uh, according to, to law and, and working environment and stuff. And and making sure that our shops and departments where young people can work uh, know what what the young people are like able to do at their place is, is the first step. And then the second step is the whole thing about making sure that our recruitment systems are are ready for those changes. And at the moment, I have identified that we are not really um, uh, distancing from from if you are a school uh, kid or if you are out of school kid when we are hiring. And that's that's uh, two different roles according to the Danish law of what you you are able to do in your environment. So so at the moment, we are trying to adjust how we are recruiting young people in order to make sure as many young people can work in our places as possible. So that's one of the things, for example. Okay, do you do see, um, what, what about uh, if you take, uh, does any of your competitors also have this or are you very different in that area or what do you, what do you think? Yeah, so I can only speak from what I know, right? Um, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really into uh, exactly what they're doing. I know one of our competitors is making a youth board where they are gathering young people and they can give recommendations and so on. What we are doing is that we are we hired me as a youth minister and I am democratically elected. So I was not uh, working at Corp before. I I applied for the job and I went through interviews and then the HR department decided on two candidates who were running election. So all of our our employees with especially focused on the young people could vote who they wanted as a youth minister. And, and that's how I got my job. But I'm not just another adult uh, talking on behalf of young people. I will have a, a youth board as well who will uh, will tell me what they would like me to work on. And, and then I'm a dedicated resource to make sure that their interests are represented, but also a dedicated resource that I'm making sure that all the initiatives about young people in our company is, is coordinated one place. Because Corp is okay. a big place, right? And we have like we have uh, at the moment we have six change, 
who have their own HR departments and so on. And, and sometimes they are working independently and sometimes we are better in working together. But, but getting me here, making it easier to co coordinate like uh, on, on cross on the, the different change. Uh, it sounds like an interesting idea, but, but there also maybe has been some challenges. Uh, could you maybe elaborate on that? What has the biggest challenge been uh, trying to enforce this? If you ask me, the biggest challenge would be if the organization were not ready for this. And, uh, and, and luckily, our, our HR uh, director has, has got some good advices on the journey of making this position where she got the advice is that it's important that the young people are set free so you cannot decide what what is important for them you cannot uh, you cannot fully decide what the role should be doing because you want to achieve something new here right and and you want to do something differently than before so so i am luckily often told that i have uh, like big frames for what i can do in my work and I think that's the, the the most important thing about this role, basically, because I'm I'm working with generations who are thinking in another another way than than former generations are doing, and therefore it's important I have the the freedom to to think like I think the young people would uh, would prefer, right? And um, yeah, so that's that's I think that's the most important. And what I also see is that we sometimes because I mentioned it myself now, sometimes we are we are making bigger distance of our generations than we perhaps should do. So sometimes when we, for example, talk about social media or something, we are, we are if we are adults, we are quick to say, oh, that's a, a, a young thing and, uh, and uh, it's uh, weird and stuff. But if we just maybe used a couple of minutes more to understand, okay, are they answering a message? Are they checking their calendar? Are they actually doing something productive? Instead of just thinking they are on TikTok or doing something not useful, uh, that I think would be very important. So, so my role is also, uh, making sure the generations are meeting each other more. So I'm not just a resource being like, well, well, well the young people should be uh, be the best all the time, but it's important. I am I'm coming with some ideas on how to elaborate and how to the, the generations can work across each other. Okay, that, that, that makes perfectly sense. I can only say it from, I have uh, young kids myself, so I can only say that from that, uh, trying to understand the world. But what about the whole, what, what's on there? From your perspective, what is it that they actually actually occupies their young minds today when they at work at co-op? What is it that, that they really are passionate about or would like to explore more? Um, what do you think? Yeah, maybe young uh, people in general, because I don't think the young people at our place okay. are different from from other like young people. But young people want to do their best, and it's important for them. What I normally, when I go out and, and I, I give advices to our leaders in the shops and so on, I, I say to them, think about how you want to be treated yourself. And then you know how you should treat the young people. The young people have uh, new um, new uh, ways of being together, for example, on the social media and stuff. But they still uh, want acknowledgement, a challenge, friendship. Uh, they want to know their schedule, all of those basic things that you and me want or, uh, as well. So sometimes I think we are like um, making young people like aliens who are thinking differently and stuff. They just have uh, different uh, platforms than than we are used to. But the whole like human being thing, I think, is the same. And 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 from my perspective, they are, they want to do their best, and they want to get acknowledgement also from their uh, their, their friends. And that's maybe one of the the challenges I am working with um, on the whole like uh, society level is that we are, if you ask me, uh, very focused on the right education uh, and not about what makes you happy. And that's a challenge for my young people because they are often told that they're not good enough. And, and I can take an example myself. I, I have been a shop manager in a fitness center uh, before and I have an academic uh, education. And my friends were asking me, why are you uh, using edu academic education to work in in a fitness center and and i was really happy for my work and i had 40 employees that was a big place and a good challenge for me but i still had to like, all the time come with arguments why my good, uh, job was good enough and that sometimes can be the same thing my young employees in corp are 
are facing that maybe they didn't choose the academic way or they choose something else and 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 the society around them are not acknowledging that they are actually making sure that there are food on the table so the rest of the society are working and we are actually all the time trying to make sure we have the products which are good for the world and that are produced in a way where the producers has uh, has good conditions for doing it right so they should be extremely proud of the what they are doing for the society but still they have the feeling of the society not really acknowledging them for the work they're doing Oh, that's that's interesting. But what this is, is maybe also to, uh, on the, uh, touch on the topics around uh, this this whole discussion about the purpose-driven work. Is that something that you also see uh, or can elaborate on? Yeah, sure. What I also see is that the, the, it's it's extremely different um, uh, in this sense. What is important for our young people uh, uh, from where they are living. So ge geography is pretty uh, pretty interesting in this way. I have uh, I have school classes um, who I'm also talking to and stuff. Uh, and and I had a school class from from the very west of Denmark where where I was asking them about like uh, uh, ecology and uh, and uh, vegetarian food and stuff. And that was not so important for them. But if I talk to the kids in Copenhagen, for example, this is super important for them. So. Um, I think the whole value is is important for the young people, but but on different levels. Perhaps in uh, in other places of Denmark, which is not the capital region, uh, other things are more important. For example, the whole so social thing. Uh, we see really in our shops and uh, outside the bigger cities, the, the 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 best thing I would say about the working conditions there in in our shops is that they are really gathering all the young people from their local areas the the local areas is not always having so many possibilities for the young people to meet but but through their uh, young people working in our shops they meet each other and sometimes they also have a beer after the shop is closed and stuff and in that way we are we are in in, in outside city areas of denmark an extremely important place for young people to meet where in for example the cities it can be the whole value thing that we are we are very focused on, on creating a better world through what we are doing that is uh, on top of the mind of the young people. That's pretty interesting. So what you're saying is that you, you actually see a difference between the, the bigger cities and more the local communities. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Um, and obviously I am very generalized right now, right? Um, but, but what is important for young people is obviously different from where they are living and, and what they are, they are up to in their daily life, yeah. What about uh, your own vision? What, what if you uh, would say that um, in one, two years or whatever? I don't say, not forget the time frame, maybe. But yeah. where is it that you would like to take a corp from your vision? Where is it, where, what is it that you want to achieve? If you can be a bit, maybe some example on that one. First of all, if the young people have felt a change in a better way, whatever that is, then I'm happy. And it's not not necessarily because I they they know that the youth minister have done something. It's not the important case, but and and they could feel in a better way. That could feel, for example, that their uh, manager in the shop is um, is more careful about acknowledging them for their work, or or better in um, in having conversations with them to uh, to understand what they're interested in, so they can fit their job in that way. That could be one thing. Another thing could be that they would feel more acknowledged from the society of the, the task they are they are doing for the society. And a third thing could be that they got a change to get on the job market that maybe they didn't get another place. Um, so so there can be so many different reasons for 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 having a good um, experience in our place. So so the most important thing for me is that they they feel a change somehow. This was the Talent Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening and see you in the next episode.